Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Oh, well, welcome to theCUBE. John Walls here with Keith Townsend talking about reInvent, the big AWS show going on here at the Sands Expo Center and talking about 40,000 plus people. I don't know how many hundred thousand square feet of, of boost space we're talking about here, but this show has grown exponentially from last year to this year and we're looking forward to being with you here for the next three days. Again, I'm John Walls with Keith Townsend. Keith, always a pleasure to see you, sir. How you been? I'm been I've been really well. I'm uh, navigating the four yeah. hotels this kind Conference is spanning all. I, I, last number I heard almost fifty thousand people. Is that right? Yeah, yeah it's forty-eight thousand, forty-five thousand. A huge conference. Well, quite often, for those of you who come out to Las Vegas a lot for shows, you realize that there are certain anchor centers, but as Keith pointed out, we're talking about four hotels and even some spillover into a fifth as well, so the sessions are packed, the ex exhibits, uh, exhibits are, are certainly dynamic, already attracting a lot of attention behind us, and we're glad to be with you here on theCUBE. Uh, it's a pleasure now to introduce Eric Thomas, who's the Director of Cloud Products at uh, Extra Hop, and uh, good to see you, sir. Yeah, you Thanks too. for being with us. Thanks very much. Breaking your maiden on theCUBE, is that yeah. correct? Absolutely, first time. Hopefully not the last. We'll go easy on you. Oh, thank you so much. Right, Appreciate right. that. Uh, Extra Hot, based out of Seattle. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit first off about core competencies, what you guys do, and then we'll drill down a little bit to just why you're here at AWS. Absolutely. So we're a platform for what we call uh, wire data analytics. Essentially what we do is we use the network as a data source for application intelligence, performance, security, forensics, you know, whether that's sort of public or private cloud, on-prem, hybrid setups, we sort of sit on the network, virtual or physical network, listen to all the traffic, and then we analyze it sort of at an application layer. So we speak web and database and storage, active directory, single sign-on, all these different sort of services and protocols. Then we apply machine learning to that to surface insights to IT professionals and app developers. So, I mean, are you looking, are you looking for um you know, I mean, uh, whether it's code issues or, or maybe infiltration or maybe for performance, I mean, I mean, we're everything. All the above, all, all the above. The above. All right. So, you know, we sort of started off talking about IT operations, performance management, availability, downtime, and our customers then said to us, you know, once you have full visibility across the entire app delivery chain, there's real implications for security there. You know, finding intrusions, anomalies, and things of that nature. And so, over the last few years, we've gotten more and more into that business. You know, as far as AWS is concerned, kind of the cloud operations, We've been supporting AWS since 2013. That was our first product offering. And we allow our customers to maintain their visibility as they shift their workloads to AWS. And sort of the value prop here is kind of a shared responsibility model, whether you're talking about security or infrastructure. At the end of the day, the business and the customer still responsible for the application. So help us understand why our data in the cloud. I mean, I, I, I'm used to taking a network analyzer and putting it on my wire in the data center, and I can get the really smart people to look at that data and extrapolate and find really great patterns. Do I really get wire data in the cloud? How do you guys work in AWS? Yeah, so the virtual wire is still a virtual network, still you know, the same TCP connection, the same packets going across the virtual wire. So we capture that virtual network traffic, marry it with physical network traffic from the data center or on-prem, put it all together in one package. So across customers, you guys have to have a lot of great insights. Do you have a service where you anomalize that data and then provide that insight back to your customer base? Yeah, absolutely. So we sort of turn that you know, investigative workflow on its head where we do analysis and find the interesting stuff up front so that you know, the smart people don't have to go digging through packets and network analyzers. We surface our machine learning insights by looking at behavioral anomalies. We can kind of separate those into operational versus security anomalies to kind of improve the signal to noise ratio for both IT ops teams and security teams as well. But to deal with the security stuff then on, on that level then, an interesting point, Keith, that you bring up, um, the fact that you can learn from the greater community and apply it to specific examples. What are some of these high level findings? I know we don't get into specifics, or you know, too specific, but what are you finding out in terms of security concerns and, and how people are best addressing them, best practices to addressing them? So, well, so we just uh, announced yesterday a new rev of extra hop for AWS, which enables a lot of new types of use cases or outcomes from those types of security anomalies. It's a great example. You know, you're still responsible for securing all of your storage, all of your web applications. It's easy to configure your AWS setup to let 
anybody in the front door of S3. That's, yep. we've, we've seen, seen that. We've seen that a lot, yeah. Right? Yep. Uh, pretty embarrassing when it happens. With extra hop and you know, extra hop for AWS, that's an anomaly. It's a couple of clicks to find out where it's going on and, and to fix it. So is this more uh, prescriptive or descriptive? So are we doing this pre a, an event or uh, post uh, discovery of some type of intrusion? So we're doing it as it happens. We, we talk about real-time analytics, and when we see, say real-time, we mean within one second of it happening, we see it next drop. Some vendors say real-time to mean 15 or 10 minutes. Not really enough if you're you know, trying to find a ransomware infection and stop it, for example. With the machine learning, we'll provide suggested root causes. We'll say this looks like a security anomaly. It looks like you've opened your S3 bucket. Here's how you go fix it. So let's talk a little bit about ecosystem. Security, especially in the cloud, is a really big topic. There's challenges with SSL, encryption, decryption, extra hop can't do it all by themselves. Do you guys partner with other security firms to bring insights? Yeah, we partner with a, a lot of different firms. Uh, Splunk comes to mind as sort of you know, a log analytics and aggregation um, you know, vendor. A lot of sort of bytecode instrumentation on the, uh, the sort of performance analytics side. And if you think about it architecturally, you've got the inside out view from logs and bytecode, which is great. Find out what's going on in the brains of the computer as it's self-reporting as a virtual machine or an application. We take the outside in view, and we're sort of looking at it from the outside to get more sort of definitive about literally every single transaction and the impact of everything from active, drive, all the things you can't you know, measure or instrument using, using classical uh, you know, agents and that sort of thing. So we've had those firms come to us and say, we'd like to partner with you on this, this ecosystem approach. So AWS, big conference. One of the things, I've talked to a lot of folks in the community the past couple of days. For me, this is a very different community. We have anywhere from infrastructure architects, from the big Fortune 500s, to people who have been more traditional AWS customers and are not used to going through IT and consuming these, these services. How does a, that latter customer surface up an extra hop? So, you know, having been at this show since 2013, I've seen more and more enterprise customers at these shows as these you know, sort of cloud strategies have finally come to pass. I've been talking about public cloud since 2008 or so from a strategic perspective in the enterprise. Now it's becoming real. Those are our customers, you know, full stop. The CIOs, the CISOs, the VPs of app dev, product management, et cetera. It's great to see them moving their workloads to the cloud. It's also great to see that they're you know, modernizing some of the services while choosing to leave some of their other legacy services you know, for later. We can monitor all of that sort of maintain visibility, performance, assurance, and security as they're moving those workloads. So can you talk about how you ease the pain between those two worlds, the public cloud, which is a very different operating model than what we can do in a data center. We have complete control of the infrastructure in a data center. The cloud is abstracted the way. How do you guys help even that out and make operations simple. And so one thing that we're seeing sort of from a mega trend perspective with CIOs, they really want to make as many options available to their app teams, their infrastructure teams, their dev teams as possible, because the CIO's saying, I don't know what's going to stick from a technology perspective. I'm not the one to make those decisions, I'm the one to support them. And so I'm going to open the floodgates. You know, you're allowed to do whatever you want with public cloud, virtual private cloud, I'm going to give you all these options. Meanwhile, the CISO is saying, I really wish you'd standardize. It's getting hard to track all these assets, all these different you know, middleware components that you're putting out there. They need a way to audit and assess what's really going on you know, in both the public virtual private cloud and on-prem. That's, that's sort of where we come in. So, so just in general, cloud migration, you were just saying how 08, 09, right? This has been eight, nine years in the making. Is it finally been kind of demystified to think to a certain degree and, or people there's been enough trial and error that there's more confidence for those who haven't made that leap yet, they okay, there's a more defined path and I'm more comfortable with it now. now. I think it's gotten more realistic in terms of the assumptions around cost savings. You know, when people started talking about this originally, it was like, oh great, you know, we're going to completely map our consumption of resources to what we really need, we're going to save all this money. And yeah, that's true to a degree. I think those, those expectations have been tempered a little bit as you figure out you know, where you can track that, that sort of performance and capacity, where you just want to let people run wild. So that's, that's a tempering of expectations. There have also been these unexpected benefits around next-gen application architectures, microservices, continuous integration, even continuous delivery. The cloud enables all of that. You know, it sort of inspires a level of agility in historically less agile businesses. And then you mentioned the 
kind of these microservices. How do you guys support microservices? We, we're used to the VM-centric view of the cloud. When you're talking about services that are uh, abstracted away from the VM, how does Extra Hop play in those realms? So, you know, this is sort of the next iteration of a service-oriented architecture, as people have realized, you know, that the sort of the best practices and, and sort of code patterns for developing these services. For us, you know, we auto-discover systems and services, you know, running across virtual or physical networks, which means you don't have to configure things ahead of time, and we can scale to elasticity very easily. We see services spin up, spin down, move from one place to another, move across availability zones, and we just track all of that as it happens. Well, Eric, we, uh, we certainly appreciate the time, for, and, and we want to know, how was the first CUBE experience before? You all right, you all right with it? Oh, so far, so good. What do you think? You we tell me. You're the expert. We, we didn't yeah. beat him up enough. We, we didn't. Uh, I, I got to come with tougher questions next, next time. Next time. Yeah. There you go. Eric Thomas, Extra Hop. Glad right. to have you with us here on theCUBE. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Back with more here from uh, reInvent. We're in Las Vegas, be here all week. Back with more on theCUBE right after this.